Hi folks, Rudy Green here. Today we are going to talk about the story in The Thrill of the Chase that is called Looking for Lewis and Clark and compare it to a earlier version of the story that was published two years previous to The Thrill of the Chase uh, in a Montana newspaper. And if you want to understand what I'm trying to achieve by going through and comparing these stories, go back to the first video in this series where I go into a little bit more of an explanation for what I think might be uncovered. Uh, the general goal, though, is to look for changes that Forrest made and see if there's any reasoning for those changes that might help hint towards the location or how Forrest's poem is solved. So I posted two of these already. Uh, the Totem Cafe Caper is a much longer one because it's a story that was expanded a lot more. And then I posted the other half of that with the Buffalo Smoke story. This one, as I said, we're going to go into looking for Lewis and Clark. And there is a linked PDF in the description below that you can download if you would like to follow along and you can see visually how I've marked out the changes that Forrest made before the book was published. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right on in. Dun -dun -dun -dun. There we go. Uh, of the four newspaper articles that were done, this is the only one that Forrest kept the title the same as it was published in the newspaper. I don't know if the newspaper editor picked those titles or if it was something that Forrest picked, but this is, you know, is, is named the same in both sources. So it's, it's called Looking for Lewis and Clark. And Looking for Lewis and Clark, of course, is a line from the book. And we'll get into that in just a minute. Also, of the only four stories, this is one that Forrest titles differently in the newspaper article at the beginning of it, which you see right here. The story title in 2008, as named by Forrest specifically, is God Protects Foolish Kids. So I don't know if he picked Looking for Lewis and Clark to be the title, or, you know, as I said, maybe the newspaper editor put that in there. But he kept that title. He liked that title for the book. And so it, uh, it stays that way in the book. So um, again, I'm going to skip over a lot of the materials that I think are, are just editing sort of changes. And I'm specifically looking for pieces that have been changed that seem intentional to, um, to decode further meaning. Um, he starts out by talking about Russell Osborne in the Journal of a Trapper book. Many of you have read that or have even purchased copies of it. And it's interesting that this was titled Looking for Lewis and Clark because Lewis and Clark weren't, you know, anywhere around where Forrest and Donnie go in this story. They're, they're really, you know, following in the footsteps of Osborne Russell. That's been pointed out by other people before, but uh, it might be relevant. Uh, and, and here's where that line's actually used, which is in the, the second or third paragraph here. After telling my parents that my elbow needed some room, I mentioned to my friend, Donnie Joe, that I was going out to look for Lewis and Clark. And then Forrest adds a line here that I think is significant. He says, he, you know, referring to Donnie, was quick to take the hint. This is, stands out to me because of Forrest's addition of the word hint. We already saw in the Totem Cafe caper that he added the word clue to one of the stories. And in this story, he adds the word hint. And I don't wanna get into the probabilities, but adding the word hint to one story and adding the word clue to another out of just three stories that were later published in The Thrill of the Chase, knowing that people were going to analyze the word choices and the language used in these stories that feels intentional to me. And I could do a whole nother video on probability. It's something not everybody understands well. I'm not an expert on it either. Uh, if, you're, if you're interested in that topic, the best I can recommend for you is a book called uh, Enumeracy, which explains the thinking flaws, why we don't understand probability naturally very well. But without going into all the, the details why, to me, adding those two words, hint and clue to the book, are significant. And we'll try to analyze those later. Um, so they get the horses. Uh, Forrest removes the detail that, you know, where the horses came from, Parade Rest Ranch. 
Uh, some of you know where that's been or have even been there. Another significant change in the story is that the forest, the forest, <laughs> the horse is now named. The horse is named Lightning, which is not uh, descriptive of the horse's actual behavior. And if you remember in the first video I did in this series, I'm going to call back again to the, the Totem Cafe caper, we saw that Forrest nicknamed the manager of the cafe Frosty. And because of aspects of, of Frosty's pride and personality and whatnot, that name, that nickname may have been descriptive of something about Frosty's character. But here we see Forrest use a nickname for a horse that is the opposite of the horse's actual personality or character, or the assumptions that he made about the horse. Uh, perhaps the important element here is that we shouldn't uh, make assumptions based on something just being presented in a certain way. So lightning, you know, infers speed and uh, a very fast, uh, maybe nimble animal. Uh, and we see that the, the horse didn't behave that way at all. Of course, describes him as hardly having the power to get out of his own way. Then Forrest uh, adds Babe Ruth as being the candy bars that they brought along. Uh, in the original story, he didn't, he didn't give a specific brand name. Uh, I don't know if the brand name is helpful. Uh, we see examples of Forrest using specific brand names a lot, and that may just be something to make the language more specific and interesting than it is to hinting towards something but I don't know. It's interesting that he changed that. Not a whole lot of other changes there right off the bat. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to page two because we have a lot to talk about with the next change that I think is significant. All righty. A lot of little editing changes here. Uh, Forced captions in the, the book that Donnie started to look like an untipped waiter. There's other spots that he's referred to waiters uh, in the book. Uh, I think he, he specifically calls out a waiter as something that punctuates your life. Uh, and of course, waiter in a, you know, water noun context uh, also could mean something uh, related to fording a water crossing. Fishermen wear waders when they're in water. I don't know if that's relevant, but, uh, and that's not something that actually changed if you're following along in the document here. He adds a line, the insides of my legs were raw most of the way down. Some people think that that might contain hints. I don't see anything that stands out in particular to me there. All right, so at the end of page two, this is a change that many other people have noticed, and it's been discussed before. And, and by the way, anything that I bring up in these videos, I've obviously been influenced by other people online and in various uh, Forest Fen groups that I've participated in. Uh, I'm not claiming that any of these ideas are original to me. I'm just trying to revisit them in the context of what we know about the soul. Now, so this is a change that other people have noted and debated previously. I don't remember what the conclusions were, but Forrest swaps out the word logic for wisdom. Again, wisdom being a idea or word that is also in the poem. So he, he may be trying to guide us in a direction here. And I, I don't think people caught immediately that logic and wisdom are different things. You know, it sort of sounds like we're replacing one thing with something else very similar, but logic and wisdom are not the same. Logic would be... Uh, infer more deductive reasoning, whereas wisdom infers experience or deferring to somebody who is more knowledgeable about something than you are. And to me, it's apparent once we get past this sentence that Forrest is also making or giving us examples or demonstrations of both logic and wisdom so that we can see how they intertwine in the context of the story. So the first example that he gives is one of logic. And he says it explicitly. The sun comes up in the east, and we thought out was south. So that made it easy. 
know, it's very logical. We can, we're, it's daytime. We can see the sun. So therefore, we can navigate, you know, north, south, east, and west. We were traveling north. Now we're lost. All we need to do to, is to, you know, refine the path is to go south. So that is a 100% logic uh, application based on the, the variables that are inputted. But then the sentence goes on and adds, except that south was over the highest mountain we'd ever seen. So the logical decision to go south wasn't necessarily wise, because if you're cold and hungry and, you know, maybe not in danger of starving, but at least feel like you're starving out in the mountains, uh, going to, um, you know, up in elevation or somewhere that might be even more impassable probably isn't going to be the best play. So they applied, you know, as, as the story is presented here in the book, they applied logic first and then realized that the most logical thing to do would not be wise because going south might put them in a, a, a even worse situation than they were already in. Then Force mentions the ravens yawking at us always out of range, so they, they obviously were thinking about shooting them. And then uh, we, so him and, him and Donnie, decided on a different strategy, a different plan. We decided to follow a fast-running stream that seemed to have an anxious purpose of some sort. And then Forrest describes the logic. At least we could have water, something essential to survival, and surely it would lead us to a road or a Forest Service man trail. And Forest has changed the capitalization here to capitalize Forest Service, which is something I also note in my uh, capitalization project that I haven't quite gotten to the point of making a video of yet. And this second strategy is also a failure because what happens is they start you know, following the stream and the stream gets narrower and narrower and deeper and deeper until it develops vertical sides that nothing could get through but water. So the, the logical idea of staying with water and following it to a place of civilization, it made sense until it didn't, but the, it, the stream did not lead them where they wanted to go. And uh, he describes a description of um, his little breakdown with Donnie. And then what we see happen and, and the sort of resolution of this part of the story arc is except, uh, start reading from here, it says, uh, except to say that we finally loosened our grip on the reins and the horses took us to a dirt road. So the strategy that ultimately involved or resulted in, in them not being lost anymore was not logic purely. They, uh, you know, tried following or tried, you know, solving this as a navigational problem. They tried solving it as a, you know, let's, let's follow the stream problem. But the resolution was deferring to uh, an animal that at least in this context was more wise than them. I don't know if horses uh, intuitively find their way home, but maybe that's a thing. Somebody who knows more about horses could comment on that. We had some when I was growing up, but I just don't know a lot about their, uh, their ability to find uh, where, they, where they started at. And then they come out 50 miles from where they started. Force then adds, uh, before he gives his notes, he adds a line a few days later with the luxury of hot chocolate. And this is, you know, th this, this relationship between hot and cold is mentioned so many times in the thrill of the chase. I'm not sure what the answer to it is yet, but, uh, you know, that, that seems to be some context or could contain some context. Uh, in his list, he takes out a few of the, um, the rules. This feels more like an editing change. I, I'm, I'm looking more for stuff that was added, not stuff that was removed, uh, because it may have just been altering it to, to fit the actual page flow in the book. You know, for example, removing the, uh, you can never catch fish when you're hungry. Uh, I don't think that really tells us anything. 
So, and then that's the end of that story. Uh, some of you who followed me before know that I was searching in Red Canyon. I spent several years really hyper-focused on that area. So obviously I've read this story many times. I'm trying to limit it to just the changes for this video, but I probably will do another video and go into more detail in the story. To me, what seems to me the most obvious uh, changes that, that could unlock some hidden meaning is where Forrest adds the word hint. You know, he, again, he knows people are going to analyze all of the text in the thrill of the chase, and he intentionally adds the word hint to one story and clue to the other. Uh, I don't want to get into too much speculation on what that might mean, but just based on the context here, I'm going to defer back to what I said at the beginning, which is Forrest and Donnie were not literally going to look for Lewis and Clark. And Donnie knew that when, he, when, when Forrest said that, but he also understood what Forrest meant, which is let's go on an adventure in the mountains. And so what this might be is helping us determine th this this might be telling us what a what a hint is and you know for said that a hint would help us with the clues and the the scenario that's presented in the example is for says something that if interpreted literally looking for lewis and clark would mean something different than how they actually did that in application there was, there was no chance of them going up red canyon and ending up anywhere near where lewis and clark actually were so the the example is giving us a phrase uh, that you know, communicates something, but not because of the specific words that it uses. So uh, in, a, in the big picture sense, I think that may be relevant. So that's all I've got for the Looking for Lewis and Clark story. Please comment below if you have any input on this. As I said, I uh, will include links to these original documents and the PDF files that I created. So if you want to do some of your own research on this, maybe draw some different conclusions. Everybody has their own biases. Uh, the goal here is let's get this um, let's get this poem solved.